Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be working on a few outside projects as well as an inside project. It is a beautiful day. It's chilly, but you can see there is a little bit of blue sky. It comes and goes, but the sun comes out and it's absolutely glorious. And I've got some containers that still have fall plants in them from last year and they are looking rough and I'm sick of looking at them. There they are. Snapdragons and violas that have seen better days. Boxwoods have their bronze winter color, so that's fine. They'll green back up come spring but I really just, I wanna clean these up. We're not gonna be able to pull them completely out because they are frozen, but I thought if we could cut all of that mangy growth off and then maybe top dress with pine cones, that might be nice. We've got the barn pots, the kitchen window box, it's rough, and then the back shade porch pots, kinda of what I wanna, wanted to focus on today. And maybe we'll grab some pine cones and top dress with those. We're still, you know, a good month and a half, maybe two months out from planting these. So uh, it might be nice to have something a little bit better to look at. I'm looking at the base of them. I'm wondering if I should attempt spray painting today. See that? That's what our water does to everything. Hard water is just the worst. And then in the studio, I have some ranunculus and anemone corms that I pulled out of storage out of our root cellar. That's where we're gonna start today because we are gonna soak and start the pre-sprouting process on a few of them. So let's head in there. Okay, so I'm somewhat set up here. I've got some of our ranunculus we stored in like, it's peat, kind of like a barky mix. Anyway, you can see some of them right here. These are the rose ranunculus, a beautiful, beautiful color. This is what the corms look like. And then some of them didn't get put in any storage medium at all. They were just left in these saucers. I kind of forgot about it. So these are the ones uh, in particular, I'm wondering how they're gonna do. So these are the salmon ranunculus right here. Aren't they weird looking? They kind of look like mini dahlia tuber bunches. And then we'll go through part of my order. I'll kind of talk through some of the things. Hey, boys, no fighting if you're gonna be in here. Uh-uh. Anyway, I'll be going over some of the new ones we have uh, for this year. So last year, I started the soaking and pre-sprouting process on March 1st and then planted the corms out on March 13th. I'm about three weeks earlier today than I started this process last year, uh, but it's kind of fun in a couple of ways. One will be three weeks ahead. You know, we may get some blooms earlier. They are tough plants. Ranunculus, I think you can plant them in the fall in zone seven and just let them winter over and anemones is zone six and we're zone six. So technically I could plant the anemones out in the fall. I've never done that before. Uh, when you start them early though, you know, like last year, I did put super hoops with a garden quilt over the top just to trap in a little bit of heat, um, even when I planted them out on the 13th of March. And I think that that was helpful. It just kept the soil warmer and got them going a little bit faster. But this year, uh, I will be potting them up and putting them in the greenhouse for a little while. And I might use these instead of planting them in rows in our cut garden or in the raised beds. I might use these earlier ones in containers, in earlier spring containers. So first we need to soak these corms. We do this for about three to four hours. I'm using just these cups right here because I can reuse them. The kids actually use these. They build huge castles and then run and knock them down. So they'll get them back when I'm done with this process. But uh, cereal bowls, what I used last year, but we just want to get them in water for three to four hours. So here we've got the salmon ranunculus. I'm just gonna take clumps and put them in here and then just cover them over with water. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm kind of shooting for 10 here. 10, Whew. there we go, barely, barely made it. See, I didn't, didn't do a great job cleaning them off, but I think that that might have benefited them since I didn't put them in any vermiculite or anything like that. Okay, anemones, I did not tag what they are, but last year I grew the white with the black eye and a pastel mix. So we're just gonna grab, see how different they look. So the ranunculus look like they kind of have tentacles, like they're almost mini dahlia clumps. And the anemones are more like clumps of dirt <laughs> or rocks. You can see though, where last year's growth, where the stem came out, so it's easy to know where to plant them. Like this pointy side goes down in the soil and this gets pointed up. And with these, you know, it's clear that the tentacles point down. Then you can see last year's stock. So this is gonna be a mixed bag since we didn't get them labeled very well. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A couple of the varieties that we got up early, we did put in this kind of barky, I don't know, there might be some peat in there, 
sparky mixture that we'll save and use again, but we've got ranunculus rose, and then underneath we've got a layer of ranunculus marshmallow, which is my favorite. All right, so now I'm gonna put the rest of these in cups and fill them up with water. Okay, here they are. I didn't realize, but we had a third layer in here, a variety called La Belle Champagne. So that's what's in this row right here. I ended up um, not putting 10 clumps. I don't think I put 10 clumps in any one of these. I forgot that when these do soak, they do uh, get bigger. So you need to accommodate for that. Uh, don't pack your container completely full, leave some space. So we have anemones right here. This row is La Belle Champagne. We've got our marshmallow, which I did the most of these because they are my favorite and I did order more of those. Uh, there's the salmon ranunculus, La Belle Piketty, and salmon, no, rose. <laughs> Ranunculus rose. So these will stay in the cups for three to four hours, just soaking away. We'll run in here every 30 to 45 minutes and I'm gonna give them kind of a stir, like this, one of these, just to keep oxygen going in the water. It is recommended when you're doing this process to put them in a sink where you can keep a really slow trickle of water going into the container. Uh, that way it kind of keeps the water churning and oxygen levels up. But I don't really find that to be super time efficient because I'd have to do every variety separate and I only have so many sinks. So I just did it this way last year, had really good luck with it. After they're done soaking, we'll start the pre-sprouting process, which that process is the one that takes 10 to 14 days. Super easy, you just line all these things up on a little layer of soil, cover them with a little bit of soil, and just kind of let them chill in an area that's 40 to 50 degrees. Last year, I put them in our basement. This year, I might try putting them in our greenhouse because we're keeping it right up at about 50 degrees. Uh, but we'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. Before we run outside and start our container clean out, I wanted to run over a few of the varieties of ranunculus and anemone that I did receive. Uh, the rest are coming, I think, April 1st. So I have ranunculus. These are all from Eden Brothers, which I've ordered quite a number of things from them in the past, like dahlias and um, anyway, I think this is the first time I've had ranunculus. All the ranunculus that I currently have in anemones all came from Floret. Uh, but this is a mix called Romantic Mix, mixed pink and light salmon up to 15 inches tall. And I ordered a lot of these. Let's see, 20, 40, 60. I think I got 100 of these, 100 of those. Uh, we've got a ranunculus called Purple Jean, 20 of those. Then we've got anemone called Edge of Dusk mix. Uh, there are 40. Ranunculus black, we've got 40 of those. Ranunculus red, 40 of those. I intended on planting some of these out in our cut flower garden and I like, even though I don't do a lot of red in our main garden, I love to have all the colors out in our cut flower garden. And then 40 white ranunculus. And then the ones I'm expecting to receive about April 1st, are ranunculus telecote yellow or tecalote, tecalote, uh, ranunculus marshmallow, ranunculus violet, anemone double mix, anemone decaying white, and then I've got some freesias bulbs coming as well. So it might be kind of neat because if we have these going right now and then we start the rest of these on March 1st and then we get the other ones April 1st, we might have a really wonderful succession of blooms. Awesome. And look, the sun is out. Oh, all right, let's tackle these containers first. Goodness gracious. I think after we cut these back, they might even come back this spring. Like they still have some decent looking growth. I might water, well, no, they're frozen. Okay, here we go. Those look so much better. Why didn't I do that sooner? 
I need to work on leveling this one up just a little bit. But look at these. Oh, I might run down to the basement to see what our black spray paint stock looks like. I might have enough to do the pots today. But you know, either way, I think that they just look tidied up. We can always paint them right before we're ready to replant them in the spring. And I think I'm going to even skip the pine cone step today. I'm just going to leave them because these plants, they may just grow right back. I might pop the red ranunculus out and uh, leave the yellow violas. And maybe we'll pop some of the more pink or spring colored ranunculus that we are starting today in these pots. Okay, let's head to the house and tackle the others. Oh, you know what? Let's just stop right here. Let's do these two. These are looking rough. So I had red snapdragons, ornamental kale, violas, around some fluffy arborvitas. Fluffies look good. The other stuff does not. So let's clean these up. see if I have enough moss to top dress those urns and we need to give all of our ranunculus and anemones a little bit of a stir. Take a close up look at all the containers we tackled today. Starting with the containers by the barn and they just look so much better. Getting the, you know, scrubby looking growth removed. I ended up painting them. I found a can and a half of spray paint left. A Rust-Oleum, it's a satin black spray paint. It's what I typically use. And I don't know if you guys remember when we initially got these planters, it was years ago. We've gotten a lot of mileage out of them, but I really like the shape of them. They're resin, they're not heavy, unless they're frozen to the ground like this one. I couldn't really paint around the base of that one real well because it's completely frozen in that spot. So we'll hit that in the spring. But uh, anyway, when we got them, they were tan colored. I, I think I had them that way for a season or two and then decided to go black with them. And I think that looks really good up against our white barn. But oh, they just look so much better. Having them look like that makes me extra excited for spring color. And this year I did learn that up against the white barn, uh, because I think this was the first year we planted against the white barn before it was like a gray blue, but I need to use brighter colors. I used a very soft color palette, which is beautiful. The plants did great, but I used, um, Super Tunia Priscilla Improved Cake Pops Purple Verbena and a Scavola Whirlwind Pink. Gorgeous combination, but it did not show up against the white very well. Here are the containers with the fluffies. I didn't plan on doing these, but since we were walking by, decided to get those done. They just look much more tidy. Next up are the back shade porch pots. Okay, so these boxwood spirals in these beautiful iron urns had vinca and pansies looking very tired. Cut those off at soil level. I had some uh, bulk sheet moss that I got wet. And the reason I got it wet was one, it's easier to form in the shape I want it, but two, it will freeze right here in place. Tucked some pine cones from our blue spruce that fell down this last year. I have a couple crates of those pine cones and I'm gonna 
use them until they fall apart. But I think it gave it a kind of winter yet, I don't know. I mean, the, the moss kind of has a springy look to it. It's just nice to have something there. And next we have the kitchen window box. You can see we still have some garland up, but I like it. I don't know, I have a little tree with lights and uh, yeah. Those will just stay here for a while. But our window box looked so incredibly sad. So I just cut everything off at soil level, kind of cleaned it up and it just looks better like that. And that only took one hour. I just checked my, my clock. Uh, so we have to wait a couple, maybe three more hours until the ranunculus and anemones are done. It has been now three and a half hours since we put these into soak. And it's amazing to see what one of these dried up little clumps looks like when you're done soaking them. So I saved out one of the salmon varieties so we could remember what they look like dry. Right there. And then this is what they look like after they've been soaking. Isn't that nuts? I'm really encouraged because I think, I mean, when I got into my storage containers and saw them looking like this, I thought, uh, I think I let them dry down too far. Maybe I dried them down too far before I put them in storage and maybe the ones I didn't get put in medium dried up too much. But once they soaked, like, let me pull out another one here. Once they soaked, I think they're fine. And look at this, this was one. This started out, you can see that was the, uh, the one I planted last year and it created three new ones that we can separate. Oh, that's amazing. And then again, I saved out another one. This is a ranunculus rose right here. Let's take a look at one of these. They just plump up. They get to be like a healthy looking color. That's awesome. And real quick, let's take a look at this one that's got multiples. A lot of times if you just are kind of gentle with them, you can ease them apart. So I just kind of start working at it and you can see it starting to release a little bit. Oh, here we go. So here we've got one beautiful looking clump. And then these were the three that were attached to the side. So there's one right there and two and three. Isn't that amazing? They produce kind of like dahlias, easy. To get these pre-sprouting, all you need to have is something to hold soil. I use these 11 by 22 seed starting trays just because we have a lot of them because we start a lot of seeds, they work really well. And we only need to utilize them in this process for 10 to 14 days. So I'll have them cleaned out and ready to go when I'm ready to start more seeds. And then you need soil using regular potting mix here that we are going to pre-moisten. I'm going to make my identification tags first so that I have something to set on top of the soil so I don't get anything mixed up. It's easier to do this in the beginning before I make a huge mess. And we're going to use these straight out in the garden when we plant them. So they will be useful in many ways. Now I'm going to add a little bit of moisture to this potting soil, pre-moisten like we do when we start any kind of seeds. And again, consistency you're looking for is for it to kind of hold together in a form when you squeeze it. I'm making a mess, but you don't want it to be so wet that it drips water when you squeeze on it. Okay, so we're going to get our tray right here. Put a small layer of soil on the bottom. And then we're gonna take our ranunculus. So we'll start with the salmon and we take out each clump. I'm gonna separate them if they need it. And we're just gonna lay them tops facing up. So tentacles facing down. And I'll try to get close in here in a minute. This one has three. Whew. Let's see. Oh, I can't even believe it. We're gonna have so many ranunculus this year. It's gonna be so beautiful. Okay, we got three there. We're just gonna line them up side by side in there. So we have a total of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 of the salmon variety in here. Now to keep these separate, you need to have some kind of divider. I'm gonna use my orchard tree tags because they are waterproof and they were handy. Last year I used little pieces of foil and I just created a little bit of a, a divider like that. So I'm gonna make sure to keep these labeled, but we wanna put a little layer of soil over the top of the ranunculus we just put in here. Just a little bit, don't need a lot. And I'm just gonna lay that tag right on top like that. Actually, we'll just do all the varieties real quick, same process. Okay, 
Okay guys, so I already started the process of pre-sprouting. I realized that my microphone was not on. Um, so hopefully the audio is okay and we can still use all of it because we took a look at some really cool looking ranunculus. I'm um, kind of looking at the difference between a dried one and one that's been in the water for three and a half hours. But basically to pre-sprout, we put a little layer of pre-moistened soil at the base of this tray and then we're lining the ranunculus and anemones up, keeping them separated. Um, and you can use anything to do that. I found these orchard tags. Uh, they're waterproof so it'll work really well um, just to keep the varieties ap apart from one another. So we just line up the ranunculus and anemones, put a little bit of soil on top, make sure the label's on there. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. So now that they're all in their trays and we've got them watered in just slightly, we're going to put them in a spot for 10 to 14 days uh, that stays between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I was initially thinking of keeping them in our greenhouse, but it, it, the temperature is set to not go below 50 in there, but during the day when it's sunny, it can get well above that. Like today, I looked at the thermostat and it's at 72. It was glorious in there, beautiful, but I think a little too warm for this process. We want it to stay fairly steady. So I think I'm just gonna take these inside, put them back down in our basement because the temperature stays fairly constant down there. And then at the end of the 10 to 14 days, I'll be checking on them, like I said, every couple of days for water. When I start noticing little white roots form, that's when we can pot them up. And I will show you that process too. So it'll be a little bit different than last year. Like last year, I took the pre-sprouted um, bulbs, corms, and I put them straight out in the raised beds and then covered them with some protection. In this case, because we're a little earlier, I'm going to be potting them up in nursery containers and putting them in our greenhouse to let them grow on a little bit more. And then we'll be repeating this exact same process starting March 1st. Uh, I've got it marked, I've got, I set an alarm in my phone uh, to remind me the day before to start my ranunculus and anemone so that I could be on the same schedule as we were last year. And one last thing, I did want to show you the spray paint that I use that is now all over my hands, right here. Rust-Oleum Universal Satin All Surface Paint and Primer right here in black satin. Satin, Yeah, I think it looks really good on those pots. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have the itch so, 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 so bad. I know you guys can already tell, but getting outside and just being in that warmth, it's different. The warmth outside from the sun reflecting off of a building and just feeling that, huh, it makes me very excited. So. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.